Hi everyone and welcome to episode 27 of the Spring Snowflake podcast. My name is Sophie. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Sophie Swan. There is also an Instagram profile for this podcast, which is a Spring Snowflake. There is a Ravelry group for the podcast, uh, which is the Earth Spring Snowflake podcast, and I will put a link in the comment in the down bar below. Show notes for this episode will be in Ravelry. It seemed to work well last time, but do let me know. Um, so that will provide links to all of my projects um, and all of the makers that I mention. <sighs> You do not know how many times I have recorded that intro. Oh my God. Uh, while you're also over on Ravelry, please do go and pop over to the Craft Bank. Um, that's a group that I mod and is run or was set up and run by Lisa, who is Lisa Raspberry Crochet on Instagram. Uh, that is a place where you can pay it forward. Um, so particularly in times like this where some people have lost their jobs, some people are furloughed, uh, some people are on reduced hours because of lockdown. Um, it's nice to be nice. So if you do have any yarn hanging around that you really don't mind um, donating to someone, uh, if you've got equipment, I've just sent over an old yarn swift to someone, which um, actually wasn't done through the craft bank, but paying it forward. Um, and today's episode is quite a lot about paying it forward, but I'll tell you more about that at the end. Um, there might be some cheeky things to give away. I am filming at a slightly different time than I normally film. So um, it is currently, I have no idea what time it is because my phone is literally right here um, recording the sound. I found on my, I film on a Canon G7X Mark II, which is the the podcaster's camera of choice because it has the flippy up screen. Um, <laughs> uh, but I've been finding, particularly when I was vlogging, doing my... Um, my social distancing vlogs that um I could hear there was a there was a noise that was um sounded a bit like mechanical uh, uh, which I think is the autofocus and the autofocus on here is quite good actually um but for some reason the microphone picks it up so I am experimenting and I experimented last time so do let me know if you think the sound was better, if you even noticed um but my phone is in a kind of weird cradly thing but I got this like it's like a bendy clamp thing that has my phone, which is acting as a microphone. So it is recording my voice while I film. And that seemed to work much better last time. And it, I didn't have that whirring noise in the background that really annoyed me and really annoys my husband. My husband watches these podcasts, hi darling. But yeah, it was really annoying my husband. So um, he doesn't care about the content, but he just likes... He likes to support me because he's a lovely, lovely human being. Uh, <laughs> but even he had noticed it in my vlogs when there was kind of silence or like watching Amelia doing something in the garden or whatever. So, yeah. Anyway, it's about six o'clock um, at the moment on a Monday evening. I was going to try and film over the weekend, but it was my birthday and I didn't want to. Um, but... I'm in my craft room, as per normal. Through that wall is my husband's office and my little girl is eating her dinner in there at the moment. So we might have some background noise. But we're going to see if this works. Um, and then I'm going to do bath time in a minute uh, before rock box this evening. <laughs> Basically exercising, which is part boxing tracks, part with sticks, which I use um, giant knitting needles for. Um... And it's it's just fun. It's a lot of fun. You get to dance around to rock music, um, which makes me happy because I have an eclectic music t taste in music. Um, but if you made me choose, I'd probably choose Foo Fighters. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually have quite a lot to, do, to talk about this episode. But let's start off with what I'm wearing. And I am actually wearing yarn. <laughs> so I will uh, try and give you a bit of a close up, but actually I might just pop a photo in to show you the set that I won from Maliqua, uh, Maliqua Wire. Um, and she held a giveaway. I think it was a milestone giveaway um, for this, which was a set. So it was this pendant, which is rose gold. But again, I'll put the picture up so you can see the set in um, 
close up. So it's rose gold with rose beads. Um, it is crocheted um, centre and then the beads are crocheted into it. And then um, it's a crocheted border in and I think it's Olan yarn. So yes, this is a set that I won. You'll notice that there are earrings in the set um, picture. Um, I don't have pierced ears. There are no holes in my ears. Um, so I have sent those off to a very special person. And I think by the time I press go on this, she'll have received them. Yeah, it will be past her birthday. So Rose, I hope you like your, your earrings. Yes, so the earrings have gone to my little sister for her 22nd birthday and also as a kind of graduation video, uh, video, and also as a graduation present. Um, bless her, she is uh, graduating from the University of Edinburgh this year, um, but not actually graduating because I would assume all their ceremonies are cancelled. So I'm hoping she will get a ceremony at some point, but um, yes, so I split the set up and my little sister has got the earrings um, and rose gold, rose. She's probably sick of things like that by now. I think there was a lot of time during her teenage years that people just bought her rose scented stuff. So I think she might be a bit sick of all the rose stuff, but hopefully not beautiful handcrafted wire and rose crystal earrings. Hopefully. <laughs> But yes, I love this. Um, I, uh, I was astounded that I won because thousands, like literally so many people entered this giveaway, um, which was really nice. When she then released her, um, her, some new kits for Make Your Own, I had to jump on that. So I'm, I'm kind of flicking forward to new things, but seeing as we're talking about Malik Walla, we might as well. So in this bag is, oh, let's get the thing out of the way, is a little kit for a rainbow brooch. So it is knitted, it's a knitted brooch, um, and it is, uh, so it's got Swarovski crystals um, in it, in the colours in the rainbow, and then you get your your wire, I'm just gonna get it out of the pack, you get your, all in a little little pack, you get your wire, you'll get your crystals, the only thing you don't get is your knitting needles, basically, um, and you can just use DPNs. These are 2.25 millimetre knitting needles, and I believe she has a couple of how-to videos on her IGTV, I might be mistaken by that, but I do remember how we was sh how Flick was shown how to do it when we um, had a go, or when she had a go at Unravel. So yes, this came in the post a couple of weeks ago now. Um, some of it goes to charity as well. I think it, I cannot remember what charity it was, but I'll pop it um, up here or down here somewhere. Um, but yes, this little kit I will be making at some point to make this crystal wire brooch knitting kit in the diagonal rainbow. She also did the horizontal rainbow kits as well. Um, the lovely Ishrat from Fruitful, Fruitful Fusion also got the same kit. So um, yeah, next time I go to a yarn show, whenever that may be, and Ishrat's there, I'm gonna wear it and go, have you made yours? <laughs> Next up in the admin section of the podcast is telling you about our along. So I am running a garment along, which is a six month make along uh, knitted or crocheted garments that are lesser spotted. So the, the um, mal is called the lesser spotted garment mal um, and the hashtag is lesser spotted M-A-L uh, for make along. Um, crochet and knit garments are um, included. Uh, any crochet goes because crochet garments need to be shown more. Um, and need to be further up in the uh, Ravelry Hot Right Now pages. Um, but any uh, knitted garments that are of a construction that you don't generally see, to be honest, I'm kind of saying anything that's not top down knitted in the round will probably count, to be honest. We've had some fab entries so far, which has been really cool. We've got one skirt, which is amazing. That's a fab thing, Ali. So you can use the hashtag on Instagram. I have a feeling that when I draw it, which will be in September, end of September. Yes, and we started on the 1st of March. No, middle of September is when I'll be drawing. So it closes on the 1st of September. Um, so when I draw it, there will be prizes for both Instagram for using the hashtag and also uh, discussion thread and FO thread. I think that's what I'll do. Um... Lastly, you can support this podcast um, in a two ways. I mentioned Patreon earlier. I do, uh, I do have a Patreon account that I've had a few people join. So thank you very much since the last podcast. Um, that's that's it. every time I get an email saying that someone's someone subscribed to my Patreon account. It just I do a little happy dance um, because 
you guys are helping me to uh, invest in the podcast. So this arm is is coming out of the uh, the Patreon money. Thanks. Um, the um, giveaway that will be happening later uh, is being supported by my patrons. Um, obviously we do a giveaway over there every quarter as well. Um, they get extra stuff, um, and they will also get my upcoming pattern for free. They also get the chance to test it first. Um, so if you wanted to support me on a regular basis, there are three tiers over there. All of the tiers get early access to the podcast uh, for 48 hours. The middle um, tier uh, will get that and also be entered into the quarterly giveaways. And then the uh, top tier, the $5 tier, because it's in dollars and not in pounds, um, the $5 tier will, uh, they get all of that stuff, but also they get an extra video every month, which I haven't done for May yet. The other way you can support me is just by buying me a coffee or tea, hot chocolate. Looks like Costa's reopening. I'm not going to. Um, we, I will talk a bit more about lockdown life in Life Update, but yes, uh, things seem to be um, easing for, for some people and some people have decided that they're not easing at all. Uh, um, so yes, uh, but yes, if you wanted to buy me a cup of tea or a hot chocolate, the equivalent of, then you can support us on coffee, ko, K -O hyphen F -I dot com. Um, and again, all the links are down below or in the show notes. Okay, so let's go on to the content proper shall we yes yes i have an fo yes i have an fo in fact i have technically three fo's yes let's just tell you so first things first i started this just before the last podcast and i finished it because it's in chunky weight and i couldn't put it down this is and it's huge <laughs> this oh this is my cotton candy slouch in woola hand spun yarn so this was a gradient uh, spin that Kaz is doing, um, she's calling them her pandemic spins. Um, and this is called hankering for the sea. Um, so yes, it's, I showed you the, um, well, I showed you a picture of the hank last time. Um, and literally as it crochets up, um, it gets darker and darker and then more purple and more pink. And I used every single scrap in this hat, um, because everything went in the pom-pom at the end. So this is the cotton candy slouch. Um, the pattern is by Hannah Siegmund, who is also known as the Cozy Cottage Crochet. Her podcast is amazing. I haven't watched this week's yet, but I plan to this evening, hopefully after Rockbox. Um, this is a chunky weight, um, slouchy hat. You can also make it into a beanie. Hannah has got, um, three different lengths, um, and also gives you the um, the directions of how to make it bigger or smaller as well. Um, so I love Hannah's patterns. They are very well written. She tech edits, gets them all tech edited. Um, and she also has a row count chart at the end. Her last page, literally of every pattern that she has um, created, has a row count table for you. Um, so you can literally just... If you print that thing out, you can tick off as you go. I use Knit Companion, which is an app um, on, uh, well, I have it on my iPad and on my phone, my iPhone. Um, and that is a really um, helpful way of basically, I just move my my um, highlighted row down for every row that I've, I've completed. It's really, really handy. And I love that she does that. Um, there's several pattern designers, crochet pattern designers that do that. Faye from... Um, Crochet Circle podcast is also one of them. And it's really, really handy to have that in a pattern so you can kind of keep track. Um, anyway, I'm not going to put this on because I, my hair's good today. <laughs> but yes, I'll see if I can take a picture of, uh, of, of me wearing it. But I did the longer version. So this is a definite slouch um, just so I could use up as much in the hat as I possibly could before doing the pom-pom. So the pom-pom has got two different colours in it. Um, Let's see if that'll focus on it. Come on, it might be a bit too fuzzy to focus. <laughs> there we go. So yes, there's two different pinks in pinks and purples in the pom-pom. And you'll see that some of that purple is coming in right at the top of the hat. But I love it. Um, Kaz is an amazing spinner. This thing has got um, Lurex, I think, in it, um, which is the shiny. And this is going to be so cosy in the winter. It's getting warmer here in the UK, um, in South Oxfordshire right now. Um, we are due like 27, 26, 27 degrees heat at the end of this week. So um, that's going to really help people staying in their houses. 
So yes, that is my uh, Yarny FO. The other FOs I have, I'm going to show you this, even though there's ends galore and it actually hasn't been blocked. So technically it's not an FO, but this shows you that I've written up my pattern. So I'll show you the, my progress in my, my actual blanket, but this is called... Current working title is the Radiating Squares Tunisian Crochet Blanket. It's a bit of a mouthful, but if anyone's got any ideas about what I call it, Radiating Squares because it radiates out from the centre. That's that's why I've called it that. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is the um, finished item from the tutorial that I... Um, filmed or tutorials my plan is um my the pattern has been written it's gone off for tech, edi te tech editing with a lovely sharon who is um also the yarn dyer and pattern designer at Jack dragon hill studio she's like the woman does everything um so sharon has sent me back my first draft and her notes on it i need to look at it now um and make some changes based on what she's um, suggested send it back to her for final and then it will go out to testing so what i will probably do is um when I hit publish on this podcast, um, I will also ask my Patreon community um, if they want to, want to test. I'll give them a couple of days head start and then I'll put it on my Instagram. Um, once this has gone, once this has gone live on YouTube, I'll then put it on my Instagram um, for anyone who wants to test. Um, uh, I only need a couple of people because it's literally these squares plus adding another one to make sure you're happy with the instructions for that. Um, the Then the tutorial, there's one tutorial that will show you how to make one square, um, which will be free on my YouTube channel and I'll press send on that once the pattern is published. Um, and then two more tutorials um, will go as links in the pattern so you'll have to buy the pattern pdf to get the instructions on how to join it in a square and then how to add on and make your um, blanket bigger but yes that's really exciting so i'm calling this an fo because the pattern has been written and this needs to be blocked and i need to sort out gauge but yes yay um my third and final fo was a much bigger stack of these but they've all gone into the post so i'll just show you one this is my husband's one um, I made masks. I made 18 of them, to be precise. Um, and I have worn one out to Sainsbury's and I felt a lot safer wearing it. Um, mainly because people avoided me. If you wear a mask, people avoid you. Whereas I've had some really horrendous experiences um, in Sainsbury's where people have literally like leaned over me to get stuff. That's not two metres, mate. Um, whereas when you're wearing a mask, it seems that people don't want to come near you because they think you're infectious. This pattern um, is from Tilly and the Buttons. So Tilly and the Buttons uh, put up on their IGTV a um, tutorial for making a simple kind of pleated mask. Um, this is, my husband's is in hedgehog fabric. <laughs> so this uh, comes with, you can put a filter, uh, there's a hole in there, so you can put a filter in, the, in, in there if you wanted to. And also there is a channel right at the top uh, I'm showing you the back, hence the hedgehogs are upside down, which you can put a wire in. I've put a paperclip um, in here, folded out paperclip. So you put, uh, you sew a little channel so you can put a wire in. It means that it can fit much better around your nose. So particularly if you're a glasses wearer, this is quite a good pattern because um, obviously if you wear glasses and warm air coming out of your mask, your glasses are going to steam up. Whereas this gives you that chance to put it really around the bridge of your nose. So actually the air doesn't escape quite so well. Um, so yes, um, I'm only making these, I've only made these for family. I'm not making them for anyone else um, because I don't want that responsibility. Um, I don't really, didn't really want the responsibility for, for my family, but, uh, but I was going to do it just to make sure they actually had something. Um, so yes, my mum, my dad, my mother-in-law, my brother-in-law have all got these as well as, as Chris and I. So yes, that was, those are my FOs. whips there's a lot i'm not going to spend a lot of time on a few of them but um let's start with the blankets so in my birthday present <laughs> i got a new zero three my lovely father-in-law and step no yes stepmother-in-law chris's dad and stepmom um bought me a hide and hammer zero three this is i think purple um I'm assuming it's the purple one, new do correct me if I'm not correct. Um, with the light coloured handles, these are slightly thicker and um, less. I'll show you my other zero three. 
So I've got the dark handles, which are a lot thinner and a bit more malleable um, in that 03, but this one is. So these will um, get more malleable with age. Um, but yes, this is a purple 03 from Hyde and Hammer, which was one of my birthday presents. And in here is my advent blanket, um, or rather the working bit of my advent blanket. I haven't got all the yarn in here anymore. That's still in the um, Christmas bag that I, I, I made and showed you last week. But I have made quite a lot of progress. Um, so I think that's my stitch marker from last time. I open it, let's open it up so you can actually see the stitch marker from last time. There it is. So there's the ladybird, which is a high, uh, no, corner of, wait a minute, yep, yeah, corner of craft beaded stitch marker. Um, and this thing is over a like, single bed size, enough to kind of hang over the edges of a single bed. Um, yeah, so I have done quite a number of rows. And this was, um, I've basically finished green. Wait a minute, where's the next ball? Oh no, I'm about to go into proper green. So I've got two magic knot balls in here, which actually are not magic knot balls. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, which is, this is the greens and this is going into yellows, green going into yellows. So yes, I've got greens and yellows queued up. So I've, I'm going from the kind of blues to the aquas. These light, very light ones at the top. Oh, um, if it will focus, there we go. Um, have green in them, but aren't, oh uh, yeah. They didn't really go anywhere, so I put them in with green. They could have gone in with pink, they could have gone in with purple, but I chose to put them in with green. Um, my stitch is being held by another hide and hammer thing, which is, oh, come on. There we go. Oh. News, new stitch markers. That's just the, um, the ampersand from her logo. There is another one that I've got somewhere which is her actual logo. Um, so that came as a, t as a little, a little extra, um, in my, in my, in with my bag when I, when I opened it on my birthday, which was very nice. So yes, my advent blanket is going great guns. Um, yes, the reason why I've got quite a lot of work done it, done on it over the last two weeks, um, is actually just Saturday night. Um, Saturday night, I spent quite a lot of time on a Zoom call with my schoolmates getting quite drunk <laughs> and, when you're drinking and you still want to do something with your hands other than drinking. This basically stopped me from getting stupidly hung over on Sunday morning. I just felt a little bit hung over on Sunday morning. But yes, just crocheting away, chatting away, playing silly games on Jackbox. That really helped to get a lot of that. Um, and that first magic knot ball done. Um, I am no longer doing magic knots on it, mainly from watching um, the Stranded Die Works podcast. I think it was podcast. Um, she talked about how her couple of her magic knots had popped doing her scrappy blankets. So um, she mentioned the clasp, clasp weft join, which I've tried and it actually has worked really well. You do get a thick stitch or a thick V stitch when you're doing the two yarns together. But I feel like my yarn is a lot more secure in a clasp weft join than in, because in a magic knot, you've got no ends basically. Um, so even though like the two knots are working against each other to not pull each other out. So yes, that's my advent blanket. Carrying on with blankets, we'll talk about my um, square a day blanket, which is, um, I am doing for the SCR1TN0 square a day cow. I think that's the hashtag. Um, this is in my busy pottering uh, big bag that I won from Sharon for a previous along. I cannot remember which along. Scrappy socks? Maybe any madness? something oh i literally i've been so lucky with sharon's podcast i've just won a couple of patterns from her shawl along and i didn't even finish the damn shawl still haven't finished it anyway this is my square a day blanket and as promised a la, Sha a a la sharon i am i have stitch marked every single one that i've done since that last podcast so let's so i had almost finished a side uh with my it's a stitch up yarn so this is an itch, it's a stitch up this is an it's a stitch it's a stitch up so that's that's the next thing so these two I had finished to square that side off then I added um the next monthly pack from uh Irish Artisan Yarns so these five are Sheephaven Bay and I will pop a photo here to show you the 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? Reference? Inspiration. That's the word I'm looking for. So this is the inspiration. You'll notice I've got a couple of my um, uh, quarantine beaver stitch markers on this. There's also a die candy one on here as well, which I love. But yes, I've been, it's been quite nice to put my stitch markers on this. Um, and then I did another side, a completed side, um, of some random minis. This one um, I got from the lovely Claudia, who is Crochet Luna, um, when she came over to the UK for uh, Yarndale a couple of years ago. Random, random, randoms, randoms, randoms. These are some of the yarns going into my acre. This was from um, the the swatch that didn't work so I just unraveled it and put it into my uh into my blanket and this mini set five uh mini set from the yellow to the purple is a mini set that I won from Alice of Dr Sotstagram uh, for her damn it her last along I cannot remember what it was for that's awful yep can't remember anyway um these are from the uh a relatively new diet so um uh, who is a lonely sock lady on instagram the lovely lona so she is based in denmark um and these are these are such lovely colors they're not quite pastel which makes them me happy <laughs> i'm not a pastel person um but yes so they're really good and they've got some do you like the fact that i've got a lemon on my yellow square mm -hmm. and then i haven't quite this 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 side need uh, needs to be filled with last month's Giddy Yarns Nostalgia Club, but that's still in the freezer. In fact, that comes out today, yes. Um, and then I've just been adding these ones. And I will talk to you about those in a bit, but these, I'll talk to you about them now. Um, these are the start of my 12 Days of Christmas box that I got through Giddy Yarns. It was a charity box. So it was a different yarn dye every day. Um, so I've added in six so far and I've got 12 to go. So this is Nora George um oh third vault yarns uh joni unraveled it was all based on um sweets and chocolate so um this car this one is blackcurrant and licorice this is cosmic candy fruit salad this one is so like literally that's fruit salad um game of crafting which is called fizzy wisbies this was my birthday so i've put the other hide and hammer tag on there um this is henny penny makes um which is smarties very rainbow and then this is rusty ferret yes um broch candy which i think is broch <laughs> candy i don't actually know what broch candy is but i might google it i've got one more square in my corner to to go um and then i'll head on over to the other side so i've done six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so that'll be good. So all 12 will go on one line um, once I'm finished. Um, those were 20 gram minis. So it then segues nicely onto the next project because what I did with those 20 gram minis or what I'm doing with those 20 gram minis in my Christmas bag because it's still a Christmas yarn, yes, um, is I'm making shorty socks. So um, I have been watching, I'm just going to get, I'll get both of them out. I've been watching um, the Earth Tones Girl, Denise, uh, no, no fear shorty classes, um, which are on YouTube. They're free. Um, she's been filming them over a, a couple of months and I think she's just finished um, with some extra videos to talk to you about how to add um, colour in and make short scrappy socks. Um, so I've been watching those. I've been, obviously I know how to make socks, but it's always nice to hear how other people do it. Um, and I wanted to support her by buying the pattern that goes with it. So her, there, it is a pattern that you can buy, um, but she basically will talk you through it. So you don't technically need to buy the pattern, but my feeling is if, because I watched the, the class and I've taken some information from that class that has been very useful to me, I wanted to support her by buying the pattern. So, um, I started these as two at a time on two, two circulars, which two circulars is a new new um, method for me and two at a time was a new method for me. And today I got annoyed. So they've gone on to TPNs. <laughs> so um, 
I've really enjoyed Denise's um, tutorials on how to add in and also knit over your ends um, for new yarns. Um, at particularly her method of adding in a different colour in rib um, so that you don't get those little blips of colour when you get on the pearls and that in itself was worth the price of this pattern. So these are shorty socks. So um, what I haven't done is Denise's pattern has a heel flap and gusset. I wanted to try out a new short row heel to me, which is the new depth heel by Becky Sorensen, who is also known as Soprano Knits on Instagram. Um, so yes, I basically mashed the two together. So they're, they're no fear shorty, so shorty socks. They're the kind of stitch counts for it, but with a short row heel rather than a heel flap and gusset. So uh so yes so you'll see that i have blackcurrant licorice cosmic candy fruit salad fizzing wispies smarties and i am just putting in the brock candy um so i'm at the same for each uh, there are two <laughs> so i did i was doing them two at a time but it just literally it was just i was having to having to fiddle with two different yarn ends was really annoying they are actually coming off the same ball see this is a um i hand wound this around a giant my 20 millimeter hook i use that as a noster pin so i it's i've got a center pull and i've got an outside um outside pull so um it's really good but one thing i have to show you and this just shows you about hand painted yarns and you'll see it in this you don't see it so much in the other ones but you'll see it in the smarties colorway yeah so these are the two Let's see. Do you know what? Let's get. That's because there's a DPN at the front. That's why. Can you see the difference in vibrancy of those two, the, the the two Smarties? So one's pulled from one end and one's pulled from the other end, and it's because obviously the way that minis are wound. Hello, come back to me. Thank you. Um, way minis are, are wound. And then dyed if they're hand painted if you don't get the the color all the way through some of the strands will be a lot lighter than the others so i don't mind it's it's quite cool and it's only kind of right at the um the join um and right and literally just under my heel so um but it's really interesting how particularly oh which one do you know what these two actually the the fizzing wisbies and Um, and the Smarties, how they work up in knitting. So Fizzing Wispies is basically like a stripe. Can you see it's like a micro stripe? And the Smarties is just like, you can see the rainbows developing as you go through the knit stitches. Whereas in Tunisian crochet, look, you can kind of see the striping in the, in the Fizzing Wispies, but literally the rainbow Smarties is all over the place. I love it but it's literally all over the place. And that just shows you the difference between, and it'll probably look even different in crochet. In fact, actually, these are going to go eventually into a crocheted um, northeasterly blanket, which is one of the patterns that Sharon got me for my pattern prize. Um, and it will, they'll look even different, more different. So it'd be interesting to um, do a compare and contrast when eventually I start that blanket. I'm not starting that blanket until my advent blanket's done. Um, so I am, DPN holder is by um, the lovely Marie, who is Simply Sew by Mimi. She was selling these um, for charity, for the charity that um, supports her in her um, health issues. Um, so this is, she was selling them on Instagram only. She's also a private account, I think. Um, but yes, I have got all the other yarns in here just in case. I don't have enough of the 12, but I think I'm doing 10 rounds per colour. Um, it was, it's a 64 stitch sock on 2.5 millimetre needles. Um, one by one, not twisted. I, I'm kicking myself for not doing a twisted rib because I love a twisted rib. Um, but one by one rib um, and I changed, it's a 15 stitch rib cuff. So actually there's 10 rows of the Nora George and then five rows of the third volt and then another five rows in the stockinette of the third volt um so i quite like the transition the fact that i don't didn't have to kind of do a new color after the rib um i could just do it straight from the color that i was on so yeah 15 rounds of rib one by one 15 rounds um of stockinette including some increases 
you need to buy the pattern to see what Becky does for the New Depths heel, um, short row heel. And now I'm, I've decreased again. That was the Smarties colorway. And now I'm just on the round and round. And it should be that I have 70 rows before I get to the toe. And then one color will just be the toe. That's the plan. The maths should work. Anyway, so those are my scrappy socks. Um, these are going into Sharon's um, current, one of Sharon's current make-alongs, um, which is the May Midi, May, Mid, the May Mini Madness Cal. Let's try to say that fast. Right, other one that's going into segways. Look at these segways, they're really good, aren't they? Other one that's going into the May Mini Madness Cal, and I was looking at, I was showing you the yarn for this last week, and I literally have not been able to put this down. Living in my, another one, me made bag, from some hobby craft fat quarters is my DK brioche bandana cowl and I love it brioche is literally for me it's addictive I don't know why but I love it I have literally just you'll see from there that I've just started working flat so it's a bandana so you work round and round and round and round and round and then you start knitting brioche flat so this is a really good learning piece because you are um, you're going in the round brioche and then you're going in the flat brioche. Um, so I re I've really enjoyed learning it. I've had to do a bit of Googling um, and I've had to also remind myself how to fix brioche mistakes. Um, but they're all fixed, which is really nice. Um, and there's a few ends. This is also going into the Mini Madness Cal because it's all the ends from my Truly Hooked Blanket Club from last year. Now, I thought I'd have got out the blue a lot quicker but obviously I had more um, leftovers than I thought because this ball is still quite big. We are just um, going into the turquoise, about to go into the green. Um, but I have a feeling that I won't even get anywhere close to the warmer colours by the time I'm finished, which is fine. I love a blue. Um, but it means I'm going to weigh this and see how much I've got afterwards. And it might end up being a brioche hat if I can find a DK brioche hat pattern I don't think I'm gonna have enough of this grey though and I'm not gonna buy any more because I don't buy any more drops I'm using what I have in my stash and then that's it I don't like drops they're problematic anyway so yes um on here I also have another one of my um Yarnistry beaver quarantine beaver stitch markers which is the pasta I wonder if that will focus there we go my little pasta um so yes uh these are i think there are these on chow goose yeah fix chow goose fix circulars on 3.75 millimeter needles so yes um it's not quite as easy and it's definitely not as neat while i'm learning how to do the um decreases to make it into a bandana so it's definitely not very neat at the back but this will be the back so hopefully by the time i get to the front of the v we'll be all right hopefully um and this is um stoppers to make stoppers to make sure that i don't lose my stitches because fixing brioche requires some degree of concentration and thought so other ones that i showed you last um week as just balls of yarn which i said i was going to be doing in may uh, this is my omni shawl which is now i wonder if i can ah there we go I put it there you can kind of see the the breaks in the pattern oh, maybe with my face <laughs> the omni shawl is a pattern by Faye Dashper Hughes also known as the crochet circle podcast um this was a pattern that was released in inside crochet not the current issue the one before that um and it's called the omni shawl because it can be done in any weight of yarn um basically you just keep going until you've run out of yarn this yarn is third volt yarns it is a uh, her oh, dk i can't remember what the actual caroline caroline dk which is 115 gram skein of um yarn so this will be slightly bigger i am doing this on a five millimeter furls hook my lovely wooden heirloom hook which i love um and it is living in my uh was knit it hook it craft it now is Provenance Craft Co, Craft Co um, bag with the tweed and the pink. So yes, um, 
this I in I enjoy that I enjoy the pattern. It's very meditative, but it hurts my wrist because she uses herringbone half treble crochet and it involves some twisting. Um, so my wrist doesn't like it very much. So I can't work on it for extended periods of time. Um, also, dark yarn can't do it at night. So it could have been finished by now. It's not. Acre. Yeah, let's do my acre sweater. So I showed you this bag with me pins um this is a thimble and thread make bag by well tracy of thimble and thread make um it's her large cube bag i have a couple of these um and i showed you all the elite yarn last week um the acre sweater is a cal uh, crochet along that is being hosted by claudia of crochet luna and christy glass from christy glass knits um from the uh winter 2019 episode episode uh, edition of Pom Pom. Um, the theme was terrain. Um, and without showing you the pattern, let's find the picture. Or I could just put it on screen, couldn't I? Let's just put it on screen. There it is. Let's show you all the pretty pictures. So this is the acre. Okay. So it's a colour blocked um, crochet sweater and this is where I've got to. So this will be the top. So at the moment we're shoulder shaping. So because I'm left handed, um, that if I was doing this right handed, it would be the right shoulder that I would be shaping, but I'm currently doing the left shoulder. Um, it's really nice actually. I think it'll, it feels a little bit, but it block out, I think. It feels a little bit short, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, yes. Uh, I am, although gravity, whoops, um, I am uh, crocheting this out of, out of stash, um, basically. I showed you all the yarns last week, but hence the reason why there's multiple strands coming off this. There are three colours going into the cream coloured, and there's two colours going into this one, and I absolutely love how that blue's coming up on camera. Um, this is far more, far more subtle. Um, but you can you can see the stripes and I don't mind. But it's a corrugated style um, because you're going into um, not the top loops. Um, so there's definitely going to be some stretch in this. Stretch. <laughs> um, but obviously I wanted to block out longer as well. So um, it is um, intarsia crochet. So there are some strands at the back, but actually it's quite neat. Um, and yes, I'm really enjoying it. But again... Um, small hook. I'm on a 2.5 millimeter needle. Yes, 2.5 millimeter needle. Fingering weight. It's not going very fast, very quick. Um, very. It's not going. It's not going very fast. It's not being made very fast. Um, so yes, that is my acre. I've. I like it. I'm definitely not going to finish it by the the middle of June deadline that um. Um, that Claudia and Christy Glass have um have set. It's not going to happen. Sorry. Um, the pattern, because it's in a publication and I am not, I'm not going to moan about it because it's in a publication and you kind of, that's to be expected in a publication, particularly when you've got a garment. Um, it's very sparse in terms of how much it tells you and how many, like, so for example, Faye and Hannah do row count tables and, and they, they offer a lot of detail in their patterns. However, Having seen one of Faye's patterns in a in a magazine in a in a publication, the space is at a premium, so you can't hold handhold in terms of row counts and how many rows you're doing and all that kind of stuff because there's just no space to do it. Um, so there's a lot of and Rosina from Zines and Rogers um, podcast, Zines and Roger podcast said this as well on her when she was talking about the acre that you've got a lot of next row, next row, next row repeat this for until you've got this many stitches um they don't handhold and they don't tell you like they don't tell you the, the the breadcrumbs so there's been a couple of us that are doing the acre sweater that have had to do spreadsheets and i've got a spreadsheet of like literally for my size da, 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 da. um which is fine i don't mind so much because i know it's in a publication and that's the context if this was a paid for pattern that i downloaded from ravelry probably wouldn't enjoy it quite so much um but yes you do have to do a bit of setup work with this one to make sure that you're on the right track i'm enjoying it though and i'm this is very much going to be a product 
make. It's not about the process for me. It's about the product. I really want this jumper. Um, but as long as I get it finished by the end of my own make along, my own garment along, because this is definitely going in letter spotted, it's fine. It's good. Right, lastly, is my colourful keepsake, which I showed you last week. I am now on clue three. I have not picked this up in a while. In a couple of... Mm, I didn't pick it over, over the weekend. But I'm on... I finished the texture at the start of uh, clue three. Clue four is... Clue two is done. This is going to look so amazing after a good block. It's huge and... Um, so the colourful keepsake... Um, shawl is a pattern by tina say who, who's tina say knits on instagram um she is an amazing pattern designer very very thoughtful and clear and her pattern is really good um and she's also an amazing doesn't take any ball person and an advocate for um bipop makers and all sorts of stuff so she's really good on instagram i really like her um her i don't take any bs face is amazing um but yes so this is now completely scrunched up on the needles um i am using some of my chow Gu interchangeables um and i'm onto the lace for the first lace part of clue three um the yarns in this are a vicky brown um which is this orange studio donical which is this blue and then um stranded dye works merino single um but yes it is living in my older zero three I have a collection of news bags now. I've always, yeah, it was always going to happen, uh, which is has my neon stitching and the darker strap. Um, if you want any more detail about that, because I haven't done very much on it, go back into my last podcast. So that's it. I'm going to have a new things segment this time because it was my birthday and I got the zero three. Um, I also received, shall I show you what my very romantic, but I asked him for it. So I'm not complaining. Um, oh. <clears throat> my lovely husband got me this it is an eight terabyte external hard drive which means because i've been i've got a macbook it's pretty damn big this macbook um in terms of storage but uh i edit on final cut pro and final cut pro um is a very powerful piece of software and it likes to make backups of every single thing I do whenever I do anything when I'm editing and obviously the podcast takes quite a lot of editing so there's a lot of backups um and it just is taking up pretty much half of the disk space of my, on, my, on my mac so yes this means that I don't I have to I can save everything and I don't have to keep wiping the backups of when I'm editing and stuff like that so yes boring very techy but needed. <laughs> um, I also had um, my lovely mother-in-law got me a gift voucher uh, for Truly Hooked. So I've got some yarn on the way, which is amazing. I don't tend to show you yarn um, in new things because you'll just see it when I start working with it. Um, also, um, if it comes in my house, it goes in the freezer for, t for two weeks. So everything that's come in my house for the last two weeks is in, the, is, my, is in my chest freezer in my garage right now. So that's the other reason why I don't show you stuff until I've worked with it. One other thing, so um, I didn't get a lot of kind of presence presents. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like physical presents? Um, because I asked for, I had a, Facebook does a really nice thing where you can set up a, um, like a birthday donation drive thing. Um, so I decided this year, last year I did um, the mental health um, charity and this year I did refuge because um, it's been well documented that domestic violence calls and domestic violence support is very much in need during lockdown um people are being locked in their houses with their abusers um it's blooming hard so um i live i'm safe where i am um i'm very lucky in in that um a lot of people don't feel safe in their own homes and this has been an absolute nightmare so i thought i'd put refuge as my as my charity and a lot of friends um of all my facebook friends my facebook is very much locked down um security wise um, but a lot of my Facebook friends have been donating to that. So I thought that I would also then um, extend it to you and say, if you want to support um, a charity in my name, then please do go ahead and I will pop a link down below to Refuge in the UK. Um, if you're not in the UK and you wanted to support a domestic violence charity in your own country, then please do. Um, it's a big thing right now with people being in their homes and, and not being able to get away. Um, 
and Refuge are an amazing charity for that. They um, run a lot of um, domestic violence homes, um, places that people can go to if they are running away. Um, they also offer um, a telephone advice and things like that as well. So um, really, really good. And I'll pop a link to Refuge um, down below. Um, another segue. I saw all about the segues today. Um, another segue is that um, is I got some stuff from the lovely Katie Green and she's my spotlight this uh, month. Um, so last month I spotlighted people that I love watching and I didn't include Katie in that for a good reason, mainly because I think she deserves some spot a spot by all by herself. Um, I am a Patreon, a news Patreon supporter of uh, Katie Green. She runs, she has the Green Bean podcast and she produces the Green Bean zine. Um, she is an artist by profession um but she also makes all the things uh knitting crochet sewing spinning <sighs> embroidery yeah there's not a lot that she hasn't hasn't tried i don't think um she's made her own shoes <laughs> it's amazing um I find her podcast incredibly relaxing and incredibly calming. I know that if i've if I'm feeling quite anxious or if I'm not having the best of days guarantee if I switch on one of Katie's um, podcast I immediately am in Dartmoor watching the scenery getting blown away <laughs> getting blown blown around <laughs> um and it's it's a happy place which is really nice um so yes I am a patron supporter of hers um and we get extra podcasts every so we get I think she does the podcast every other week every other week and then you get a 0.5 podcast for the patrons and then there's also like um she sits down for cuppers Saturday cupper or Wednesday cupper which is nice and um, I also I'm in the top tier I think um which also it gives me a discount on her shop so I bought some stuff from her shop um some of these are for Amelia um but what's really nice about Katie is she puts all sorts of little little things in so I got a handwritten note which is illust like has got her illustrations on it or her well it's watercolour. Um and then you've got the stickers that are her illustrations. There we go. Yarn balls. And there's also the Exmoor horn. She does um the tea towel, which I have downstairs, and the print, which is down there, ready to go up on that wall. Still not done it yet. Um and also like her little business card is her and Jack, surrounded by greenery. Um, and then she's also got the podcast. Um, this is on Scratchboard. Um, I love her Scratchboard draw drawings. They're so lovely. Anyway, talking of Scratchboard. So she has um, a couple of um, kind of note cards that you can buy from hers. And I love these ones. This is um, says, oh, the potential from a, a ball of yarn, which I love. I've got bought three of those. Um, I had a few before, but now I'm doing that snail mail um, swap, which... I owe my pen pal a letter. I need to do that. Um, I've been going through my note cards, which has been really nice. I also got some stamps. So I'm going to show you the actual stamps, but then I will show you what they look like stamped up. So for me, I bought a bee. There we go. And also a little oak leaf. For those of you who don't know, my maiden name is Oakland. So acorns and oaks, I am always drawn to. And then for my little girl, because she's a little bit dinosaur mad... <laughs> they look so cool um so we have been using them and i'll show you them stamped up and there you go oh there we go that's better so we've got a little bee me oak leaf and a stegosaurus and a triceratops very awesome so yes um hi <laughs> so yes those that was my little um haul from katie green um she has a um etsy shop which is full of lovely things do go and have a look her illustrations are just so nice um they're really lovely and um yeah she's just a lovely human being and i like that that's if you haven't if you haven't watched katie green um or the green bean podcast then please do um it's really good right on to life stuff in which there is a giveaway. It was my birthday on Saturday, which was really nice. Um, it wasn't the birthday that I had wanted because I had planned for a lot of people to be up here for a lovely weekend of celebrating friends from Kent, which is where I'm originally from, um, coming up with their families and staying over and generally just um, 
celebrating the fact that I'm a square number. I'm 36. Six times six. I'm a square number. I'm such a geek. Um, and obviously that didn't happen. So I was actually quite dreading it. Um, I'll be frank. I was really dreading having a birthday where I couldn't see my mum or like I couldn't see her in the, in the if not on the day, but in the, the days after or before uh, where I couldn't like see my friends and celebrate and have a cake and all that kind of stuff. So I was really, I got a bit tearful on Thursday about it. Um, sent an SOS text to my therapist who sent me a lovely email about how to plan for it and, and setting expectations and <clears throat> all that kind of stuff. Um, but actually it turned out really nice. Um, the hide and hammer package turned up a couple of days before, which meant I was kind of really excited to open that. I did wait until Saturday. Um, and I had some cards through the post and um, my mum and my mother-in-law and um, I had some lovely messages and I had a couple of Zoom calls in the daytime. So I had a FaceTime with my mum, which was really nice. And I got to see my brother while she was there and the puppy, <coughs> who's not really a puppy anymore. Um, and uh, my dad FaceTimed me the day before because he was cycling a lot on the Saturday um, and he didn't know when he'd be able to get a signal and stuff so he'd FaceTime me the day before um, and then in the evening uh, so I had a Zoom call with my kind of local mum friends um, which was really nice to see them um, and they sang me happy birthday which is hilarious on video call um, and then in the evening uh, I have a school friend from Kent who is exactly a year younger than me so we always have we always try and celebrate together um if we can um and there were times during our 20s where we each took a like it was one person's birthday and then it was the other person's birthday the year after so we took it in turns to kind of have have the celebration so that worked really well and this year Steve um went now nah, you can take point you just decide what you want to do um so I messaged everyone um these are all school friends uh I don't haven't really stayed in touch with my uni friends but my school friends um it's really interesting we cannot see each other for years actually sometimes um like we didn't talk to each other for, pretty much for throughout uni um and then Chris and I got married and then we just got back in touch, which was really, it was, it was sad because they didn't come to my wedding. Um, <laughs> after that, we all got back in touch again. And it's kind of, we've kind of stayed, stayed um, like that since. Um, and uh, anyway, so I kind of just messaged a load of them and said, Zoom, drinking, online games. Um, and yeah, we four like we got, we went past midnight. So eight till half midnight just chatting um we played on a uh a, i think it's an app called jackbox i didn't do that my friends did that they did the screen sharing and, and the, were the games masters but anyway um and it was just lovely and i drank far too much pink fizz um and it wasn't the birthday i was expecting but it was nice um and then on the sunday uh, we got a takeaway roast beef lunch from one of the local pubs and it was really good anyway but yes because it has been my birthday and also because I've been incredibly lucky with winning alongs and giveaways and stuff over the last few months that I feel I need to pay it forward and pay it forward in a relatively big way um I've also been incredibly lucky with people um unfortunate not lucky fortunate with people who um are liking what I do on this channel and putting their faith in me and putting coming to Patreon. So thank you again. Like, you know, guys, you know that I'm so grateful, but thank you. Um, but yes, so I decided to have a rather giant giveaway. Um, so I have five prizes. First one is um, going to be a some yarn. I, I, she's, I think... Uh, I don't know what I don't know what we've kind of I think we've settled on mini skeins but Lona who is a lonely sock lady um I've talked to her about uh me organizing some yarn so she um we have all organized that because I don't really want to go to the post office at the moment um everything that I'm sending I'm sending small enough that I can drop in a post box um so Lona and I have agreed that um we are going to have a skein of yarn 
or a mini skein set um, that the, the winner basically will, um, the three of us will all talk to each other. They'll choose what they want from Lona's shop. Um, she will then invoice me and it will be sent straight to them. So that's the first thing will be something from the Lo Lonely Sock Lady. Um, the next one is, uh, so I have been very much enabled um, by uh, Caroline of Dundonet, who is also knitting vicariously podcast. In her last podcast, she was showing those tiny little squares because she's doing a Battenberg blanket. The woman is crocheting. It's hilarious. Um, but yes, so she has been on a mini skein kick and she mentioned a yarn dye that I hadn't come across before, who is UK based, who is a wild rose, um, wild rose yarn, wild rose yarn. And she does some really lovely mini skein sets. Um, so I have ordered three of those mini skein sets and she is only posting post box sized um, parcels at the moment. So when those arrive, one of those skein, mini skein sets is going to a winner. So that's another one. Um, and then I will be um, giving out three different patterns. So uh, three patterns um, of your choice to three winners. So there'll be five winners in total. Um, I am going to open a Ravelry thread on my group. Um, uh, so a chat thread on my Ravelry group to, uh, to um, enter. And I think... I would like you to answer the question. Hmm. Now, do I be completely self-centered and say something about like what's been your favorite thing of my channel since I've been doing the podcast? Or, no, I wanna know, I wanna know your favorite birthday memory. Like the best birthday that you've ever had. What's been your favorite, what's been that outstanding memory? That's what I wanna know. Yeah, so that's what I want you to do. I'll put a post on, on Ravelry, go along, type in your favourite birthday memory and I'll pick five um, before the next podcast. So in two weeks time. That's my aim is I'm podcasting every two weeks. Um, right, that's it, guys. Thanks very much for those of you who stuck to the end and hopefully you'll be rewarded by being able to go in the giveaway. Um, thank you for all the birthday messages as well that I had on Instagram and um, all over the place, which was really nice. Um yeah, I'm gonna, I'm still going to have my party when we're allowed to. Um, just as an update, what we're doing, um, lockdown is, uh, has been lifted slightly um, in the UK. Um, our prime minister gave a very garbled message and then loads of people went to work on Monday when they really shouldn't have had, that shouldn't have. Um, and then literally everyone's just been heading to nature, pot spots and beaches over the weekend. Um <clears throat> yeah it's a bit confusing about what they actually are al allowing us to do and what they don't want us to do and schools are supposed to be going back on the 1st of june and we're not sending amelia back um we don't feel that the schools have been given enough safety precautions by our government in to make themselves safe um as well as others uh, <clears throat> So yes, Amelia won't be going back to preschool on the 1st of June. We may change our minds if things drastically change, but I have a feeling that um, they won't. I think the government has mis mishandled it. You know my feelings on this. Um, and they think they continue to mishandle it now for the sake of the economy. I don't think the balance has tipped for them um, away from public health to economy. Um, and I don't think they've done that well um yeah i'm not the biggest fan of our current government anyway um and i think actually my feelings on them have gone pfft, even further with the garbled communication and the downright ridiculous ridiculousness of trying to appeal to common sense of the uk people um Everyone's version of common sense is different. And some people you need to tell them what to do because otherwise you give them an inch, they take a mile. And that's a problem in the fact that <clears throat> it will mean that those of us who are trying desperately to keep our NHS going and not overwhelmed um, by staying inside, staying at home, our, our efforts will be for nothing. And I really hope that doesn't happen, but that seems to be the way it's going. So anyway, that being said, we're staying at home. We're still staying at home. It's fine. <laughs>
<laughs> that was the face I pulled on my kid earlier when she didn't want to do her schooling. She's four. It doesn't matter. But, <clears throat> yes. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. As usual, um, it's so nice seeing your comments, which I need to reply to. Um, and just generally interacting with you on, on the on the podcast and also on Instagram. It's 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 helping lockdown be a lot be a little bit, not a lot, easier for me. Um <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice, so I'm gonna go. I'll see you soon and thank you for watching. Bye. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 27. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 27 of... Uh, la, 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 la. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 27 of The Spring. No, I did that. No. There is a podcast group for this podcast. Oh my god. Hi everyone and welcome to episode... Oh my god. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 27 of Us bring snowflake in my show notes because oh my God. <laughs> I'm doing well. <laughs>